What's up everybody? For those of you guys that are new to the channel, my name is Luigi and I'm a recent graduate of the University of Southern California and in about three months I'll be starting medical school. If you guys want to find out where I ended up going, make sure to tune in, hit that subscribe button and I'm going to be doing a whole video dedicated to my decision about which medical school I'll be attending. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my video where I talked about my whole AMCAS medical school application so you guys can get an idea of what my stats were like and basically how I was as a student and how I was able to get in. But for today, we're going to be talking about something more stressful, I'd say, and probably for me, the most stressful two months that I've ever spent during my undergraduate career, and that's the two months I spent studying for the MCAT. The first step that I'm going to recommend that you guys do is to take into account all of the different resources that you have. That includes all of the MCAT books. For me, I used exam crackers and the set of Kaplan MCAT books which I was able to get for free because of my job as a Kaplan student brand ambassador. And then after that, you take into account all the different practice tests and practice problems that you have. For those, um, the Kaplan, basically the Kaplan course that I got came with, I think five or more practice tests. I also bought next step practice tests. And lastly, I used UWorld and more importantly, the AAMC practice tests. And if there's a ranking of which practice tests you definitely, definitely need to have, it's not going to be the Kaplan, the Princeton, or the Next Step practice test. It's going to be the double AMC practice test because those are what they say is the most realistic in terms of difficulty and in terms of the kind of questions that's going to be asked. Kaplan and Princeton, the way that they improve their students is they make those tests really, really hard so that you get used to working with difficult problems but then when you take the actual thing it's supposed to be easier for you so you know like that is one strategy out there but sometimes it can just end up discouraging the student while they're taking all those practice tests because they're getting low scores but at the same time you know it's up to you and how you best deal with obstacles that come your way now that you have all of your resources taken into account the next thing to do is to consider all of your other extracurricular activities that you're going to be doing around that time the MCAT is probably the second most important thing throughout your whole medical school application. So you're definitely going to want to put that as a top priority for whatever you're doing. But it's also understandable that you can't just give up everything else and just focus solely on the MCAT. For me, example, I had to do research just because I got a scholarship to do research over that summer. And also I had a leadership position at a hospital volunteering program that I just couldn't skip out on because of my role. Additionally, you know, I also wanted to make sure I spent time with friends working out and having enough time for myself to relax as well as a family trip that was already planned way before so I can't back out on that so with those taking into account you, know, you got to make sure you put it in your calendar and wrap your study um, like your study schedule around that and make sure that you're able to get enough hours each day to review and to just you know make sure you're in the right mindset to think about the MCAT and then you'll be able to plan out a whole schedule and just grind it out okay so if we take a look at my laptop here is a sample schedule that I made, which is based off of my actual study schedule for the MCAT. Um, the only differences between this sample schedule and my actual schedule was that I had to take a family trip, which was basically around the beginning of month two. But besides that, you know, like this is basically what I did. So if we break this whole thing down, we're going to start off by taking diagnostic tests and then reviewing those diagnostic tests. So with the diagnostic tests, those are basically shorter versions of the MCAT which is pretty good to take in the beginning just so you can get a gauge of the type of questions you're going to be asked and the kind of knowledge that you're expected to have for the test. These tests took maybe like one to two hours, I think, or maybe four hours, which is half of the actual MCAT when I took it. And then doing the review would take, you know, like three hours afterwards. But yeah, like it's just important to get that initial gauge of the challenge that you're about to go put yourself through. Okay, and then next, as you guys can see throughout month one, that's when you're most focused on just studying and gathering as much information and just putting it all in your brain before you take a lot of exams during month two. But again, if you take a look, there's a lot of breaks during month one and that's just because during that time I was coming off of school and this is basically one to two weeks after school started or after school just ended, which means that, you know, like I'm kind of burnt out from finals and I need some time to rest before I go all out on the MCAT. It's always important to make sure that you keep your mental health in check. So that's why there's a lot of breaks during that month one, just to slowly ease myself into um, going hardcore studying for the MCAT. And then as you can see, there's those study days. With those study days, what I did was to basically just 
focus on reviewing certain sections of each uh, section of the MCAT. You know, you have the physics, chemistry, biology, then you have cars, which honestly, in my opinion, is just all practice. And then you have sections like psychology and sociology, which is purely memorization. So during those study days, it's all about just grinding out, reading those textbooks, and then maybe taking some practice problems along the way, which is why I put UWorld there also. So with that, each study day, I would say, would be around five, six hours maybe. And that's just because for the other times of the day, that's when I take care of all those other extracurriculars like research, which I had to do every weekday for about four to five hours. And then also my uh, hospital volunteering, which I had to go in uh, maybe two hours per week. And then working out was every day for one hour. So after you've gone through basically three weeks of pure studying and then doing practice problems with UWorld, around the middle of the fourth week, near the end of the first month that you're studying, you're gonna be taking your first full exam. And that first exam, just, it's gonna kill you. And just expect that and have be mentally prepared for that. Just because you don't wanna get discouraged when you see that your score isn't as good, just remember that you have to start from somewhere and that's gonna be your first, you know, like full on experience of what an actual test is gonna be like. Every time you take a practice exam, I definitely recommend simulating what it's gonna be like in the actual test, which means sitting somewhere quiet, have headphones on because during the test, they will provide you with headphones and then just taking the test with the right amount of breaks and you just have to look up online, you know, what the MCAT format was like, how many breaks in between each section. If you get a lunch break, then definitely take that lunch break. But make sure that everything is right on time and you're simulating it the closest that you can so that during the real test, you're not going to be stressed out by any external factors and all you have to focus on is the test. Your body's going to be used to the whole eight hour schedule of taking the test and then you won't feel any fatigue throughout the whole time. So that's why you have to, you know, treat practice like it's the real thing. So as you can see, my whole schedule for month two, basically after I'm done gathering all of that information is to just take a practice test, rest the, the rest of the day, the next day, review those practice tests and then do UWorld world practice problems based on the sections that I'm missing more of. And then afterwards, just do like a light study session and spend that rest of that day relaxing just so you can be ready to take another full exam the next day. And you're just gonna be repeating this cycle a lot throughout that second month. And that's just because my philosophy was that a lot of the MCAT is basically test taking strategies. So the only way for you to gain that is to keep cranking out practice problems, keep taking those practice tests, and soon enough you'll be able to pick up certain like tips and tricks to help you get answers right, even if you don't fully know the science behind it. So that's why it's important to have a good baseline of the science, but at the same time, knowing all those like key tips and tricks is more important which I'll be doing a full video on later on. So hit that subscribe button. And then if you guys take a look at the list of full exams that I have written down, they're just generically named full exams, but there's three that I specified, and that's the AAMC number one, the AAMC two, and the number three test. For the number one test, I specifically put it in the middle of month two, and that's because after taking all those practice exams, you know, you kind of want to see where you're at relative to the real thing, and that's by taking the first MCAT, a a AAMC practice test. And then, you know, like once you get a score there, you're, it's expected that that score will be higher than the rest of the scores that you've taken just because all of the full exams are probably going to be from Princeton, Kaplan, Next Step, all those other brands that make their tests purposefully um, harder. So then you're going to have a great boost in your AAMC first test. But then when you go back to taking those other brand tests, your scores are going to dip but don't worry about that. Just focus on improving each time. And then on the last week, so this is really important. On the last week, that's when you should take the other two practice tests, just because those are gonna be very, very similar to the real thing. And that's when, you know, you kinda wanna get, you wanna go into the actual MCAT with a slight confidence boost, and that's by getting high scores on those two practice tests. And I can't stress this enough. It's important for you to be relaxed and to go into that test day really calm, collected, with a slight sense of confidence. So make sure you take breaks throughout that week. And if you have work, if you have research, always ask your supervisors if you can take that week off, just so you can put all of your mental focus just on the MCAT. So now looking here, we're looking at um, 
basically my scores tracker as I'm taking all those practice tests. As you guys can see with the diagnostic test that I took, I, like those are so bad. But you know, like I had to keep a calm head and just realize that, okay, this is where I'm starting from. It can only go up from here. Then I took the real um, full length test after about like three weeks of studying and I was back to where I started, back at the low score. But you know, just gotta keep looking up. So then from then on, the next three tests really frustrated me because my scores didn't change at all. But then I started to get this like simmer of hope when I took next step, uh, the full exam for that. And I got a 506, which is higher than my 502 average thus far. And then from there, my score kept fluctuating and my heart broke when I looked at my AMC first exam. Everybody kept saying that it's going to be very close to the real thing. I got a 502. I there's no way I'm going to be happy with just a 502 on the real MCAT exam. So seeing that disheartened me, but at the same time, it also motivated me to put in a lot more effort into studying and into learning those test taking strategies. And then from there, it slowly kept creeping up. I would get some 504, some 508. And then when I took my second AAMC test, that's when I started getting really hyped up and really happy because I got a 510. So that made me think like, okay, a 510 is pretty good. Like I'll be happy with a 510. And then I took another practice test in between just because I was getting kind of angsty like throughout the whole time. So I took that and that just ruined my mindset. But luckily I had enough time to take the third AAMC test, which they always say is the most realistic, it's the most comparable to the real thing. And luckily I got a 512 for that. And as you guys can see, it's somewhat realistic where I had a one point difference from my last AAMC test to the actual MCAT test that I took. Another thing that I like to do just because, you know, like when you're learning something, it's really important to take into account all the minute details. So I made um, graphs basically, and I also kept track of each section of the exam so that, you know, instead of me just focusing, okay, I need to improve my whole MCAT score. I thought about it as like, okay, chemistry and physics, I'm decent at it. Cars has always been my weakness. Bio and chem, that's okay for me. And psych and social, would, I would say was kind of like my strong point. So with that into account, I decided to like focus more on cars and a little bit more on chem physics and bio and biochem. So, you know, if you take into account all the little details, you'll know what your weaknesses are, what you're improving on, and that's going to help you better format your um, study schedule after each test. And here's a little sneak peek of what I'm going to make a future video on. This is called the Why I Missed It Tracker. Um, so what I did with this was I basically just took into account each question that I got wrong and wrote a short explanation as to what the right answer is and why or why my answer is wrong and then I would take you know five to ten minutes deep diving into that topic just so I could like remember it better in the future and I won't make the same mistakes. A lot of the things that I got wrong in the first couple of tests was basically just formulas and that's just you know like seeing it more you're gonna remember it and then cars I didn't even bother like writing it down because it would take paragraphs to explain so I just basically like corrected myself read the explanation on the practice test and did a lot of U world problems for cars. I feel like that's the best way to improve on your car score is just U world practice problems. Just their explanations for why you got it wrong or right is really, really good. And as you guys can see, I did that for every single practice test that I took. And that, that just, yeah, it took a lot of work. And as you guys can see, like near the end, I'm only getting, I'm getting less and less wrong at each section, which is what you want to see. So yeah, you know, like if you put in the work, like it'll definitely show. So that's why I would spend the next days following my practice test, just doing the review and then doing UL well practice problems on whatever I got a lot of on. So once you completed all of your study days, all of your practice tests, the last and most important thing to do is the day before your test, make sure you take into account all of the logistics, the time that you need to be there, the exact location, the parking situation, take every little thing into account just so you go into that test center knowing full well like that you're just gonna be there for the test and you don't need to stress out about anything else so once you have that figured out then you're all set and on that last day just rest relax and get your mind mentally ready for your big day
Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. If you found this content really, really helpful, make sure you hit that like button. And if you have any questions about the MCAT or anything about the med school application, hit me up in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.